the paper C3 of the June 2018 series. Oh, wasn't too bad at all. Now, I just want to say a few things. Overall, this paper was okay. I mean, some of the questions were quite difficultly asked, but otherwise, some of them were not too impossibly difficult. Okay, I've already solved the whole paper, and um, and these are just my solutions. Yeah, I've referenced student forum. I've double checked, you know, various websites just to be as hundred percent accurate as possible. Yeah, I mean, if you guys spot any single inaccuracies in any single part, please let me know. But otherwise, um, let's without further ado, let's jump straight in. So here we go. Yep. Okay, number one. Here we go. So given that we've got a typical equation, find dy over dx, giving your answer as a single fully factorized expression. Okay, now before you know you look at the solutions, um, when you differentiate this one, how do we know what to use? How do we differentiate this? Well, look at this, we can see that we've got two functions. We have 2x and we have another one, 3x minus 1 to the power of 5. Because you've got two more applied together, we use the product rule, okay? If it was 2x over this term, it would be the quotient rule. Okay, so that's two ways to differentiate. Now, when it's a single fully factorized expression, this means that when you differentiate this one, not only do you use the product rule and, and sort it out, you'd also have to uh, tidy up completely, okay? Now, let's have a go. So, typically, to use a product rule, you pick one, vari one variable as u and the other one as v. So my u is 2x and my v is 3x minus 1 to the power of 5. And then you differentiate both. So I just wrote u prime. This means the du over dx and dv over dx when you differentiate. So differentiating 2x gives you 2. Now differentiating this one over here, 3x minus 1 to the power of 5. All you want to do is firstly drop the 5 down. So you've got 5 in front. And then differentiate the inside of the bracket. So differentiating 3x minus 1, you get 3. So you, then you should have 3, then using that 3, multiply to 5 to get 15. And that's it. And then you copy the, the expression. And then dropping the power down by 1, as always. Okay, and that's it. That's literally done. This is essentially called the chain rule, by the way, yeah? So this also has a name. Chain rule. Okay. Now, dy dx, to use a product rule, is just literally like this. You do the v term times u prime plus u times v prime so just like that or other way around so you can just say 2 times 3x minus 1 power 5 so just glue them together plus and then u times v prime so 2x times 15 will give, give us a 30x copy the rest and now you just want to factorize collecting like terms this is the final answer but to get to this one what we have to do here is basically look at the expression and realize that they both have 3x minus 1 at least four powers of it, whilst the, this one has an extra power. So if you factorize 3x minus 1 to the power of 4, and of course 2 outside because 2 goes into 30 as well, so having something like this, 3x minus 1 to the power of 4, you'll realize now that on the left side, you still have an extra 3x minus 1 to account for it, plus on the right side, to get 30x from 2, you've got 15x remaining, and of course you've used up all the 3x minus 1 to the power of 4s. And then you just expand this, tidy up. So 3x minus 1 plus 15x will give us 18x minus 1. And that's it. Fully factorized. Okay? So let me know if you guys understood this fully. Give me a like and so on. Otherwise, let's look at B. So hence, find the set of values of x for which the der derivative is less than or equal to 0. In other words, when this solution here that we just obtained is negative or 0. So we've got to find what x values make it negative or 0. So opening statement, dy dx less than zero, copy this down exactly, and then you realize you can just cancel out the two because dividing by two, you still get the same expression. Okay, now, what do we do here? So this one, I use a true and false um, technique. So first things first, find your critical point. So th what this means is that, see when this one equals zero and this equals zero. So you've got three x minus one equals zero. So x must be a third if you solve it. 18x minus 1, if that equals 0, solving it, x equals 1 18th. Now, what I do here, and this means firstly that these are valid solutions, by the way. These are two of the solutions that will make dy dx less than 0 or, or 0. Okay? Now, putting this in ascending order, I put 1 over 18 here and 1 third there. All you want to do now is plug in, put random x values that are less than 1 over 18, between 1 over 18 and 1 third, and greater than 1 third to see if it's if the answer is less than or equal to 0, if it's true or false. It's true if it's less than or equal to 0, false if it isn't. 
So for example, I'm going to pick an easy value for, for values less than 1 over 18. I'm just going to pick when x equals, say, 0. Okay? When you plug in 0 to the equation at the top here, you get 0 minus 1 to the power of 4 and 0 minus 1. Solving this, you get negative 1. So you get a value less than 0, which is true. So the answer is true. So this means that for values less than or equal 1 over 18, it's true. So that's one solution. So we can say x is definitely less than or equal 1 over 18 because that seems to be true. And remember, this is, if it's true for one value, less than 1 over 18, it's true for all values because it's, it's, cause 1 over 18 is the critical value. It's, the, it's, the, it's literally the, the turning point here. Now, next one. Between 1 over 18 and 1 third. To make this easy, just because you just pick values between 3 and 18. So I'm going to say, I don't know, uh, 1 fifth here. Now, if you plug in 1 fifth here to replace x with 1 fifth, I end up getting a positive value, a value way bigger than zero. So, of course, this is going to be false. So, this means there is no x values valid between this range. So, this is false. Now, picking a value bigger than one third, I'm just going to say uh, one because it's easy. Plug in one over here, and you realize again you're going to get a value because you're going to get what? 3 take away one, which is two. Two to the power of four is positive. And then 18 take away one is 17. So, you're going to get two positive numbers multiplied. Of course, you can get a positive answer. So it's going to be false. So again, this is false. So that means there is no x values valid. Big, that's bigger than a third. That will give you a solution less than or equal to 0. So that means the only possible solutions would be when x is less than or equal to 18 or when x is exactly equal to a third. Because remember, these, these are valid solutions too. So we say that these are the valid pairs. So x is less than or equal to 18 or exactly a third. And that's it, guys. If you found this first question helpful so far, please give me a like and share with your friends. Otherwise, let's move on to the next one.